Hi guys, welcome back to my Inktober art challenge series. We are one week down and three more to go. Today's video is structured a little bit differently. I will be explaining the piece that I'm working on first, and then I will discuss the topic at the end of the video. This will allow me to talk a little bit more about my process while I am making the art and give you guys some time at the end to really think about the topic and reply in the comments. But the one thing that hasn't changed are the materials. I am still using the same ones from the beginning of the month, but those can be found in the video description below. Today's prompt was the word precious. And obviously, I had to go with one of my favorite Lord of the Rings characters, Golem. I had a really strong sketch this time. I spent over two hours making sure that everything looked right, mainly focusing on his body, hands, and feet. Because the sketch was so detailed, it made it easier to go in with the ink when I started doing the outlines. I decided to stick with the 102 nib because it's more firm and because of that I have a little bit more control over the nib than I do with the previous one I used which was 108. Also there are very many small details in this piece and I needed a smaller nib to create those fine details. When I'm inking, I like to start from the far left so that by the time I get to the lines on the right side of the drawing, the ink has already kind of dried and I can avoid smearing any wet ink with my arms or my hands by starting from the left side first. I like to do really light strokes and thin lines to create a first draft of the outline to get a bigger picture, I guess, literally, <laughs> of the whole drawing. Once that's done, I go in with thicker lines bringing attention to any of the main subjects in the piece. This is one of the benefits of doing a very light outline first, is that you can see where exactly you need to make lines a bit bolder to kind of make things stand out more. I'd like to get better at creating longer strokes, but I think that will come once I gain more confidence using this nib. Also, I figured out the problems that I was having in the previous video with this pen and nib. If you got rid of the excess ink right before you pulled the pen out of the jar, probably by dragging the back of the nib over the lip of the jar, you'll actually increase the ink flow that comes out onto the paper. So less ink in the nib means more ink on the paper. And the other issue that I was having was related to the angle of the tip of the pen. I noticed that this 102 nib is less forgiving and you have to be really specific and precise with what angle you're holding the pen and the tip at. I also learned to save the details for last because I tend to go overboard with adding details, especially when I'm working with a dip pen for some reason, and it can become too distracting to the overall piece. And finally, the last point I wanted to make is that I think I need to get better at visualizing what could be done in ink versus what could be done in paint. For example, the platform that Golem is sitting on, I wasn't sure if I wanted to add the details using ink or using watercolors. And I decided to go with ink because I thought it would look stronger and I'm glad it did because it really did help make a difference. But if I could start seeing those aspects of the illustration or painting before, I attempt to ink or paint that would probably help avoid any major mistakes. Moving on to the painting portion of the video, I 
wanted to try a different process. It's a lot slower, but it works really well. And since this is a cave scene, I figured it would probably be best to work from light to dark anyway. I had to wait for the ink to dry completely before I started to apply watercolor, which is why this part of all of my Inktober videos is usually a little bit darker. But while I waited for the ink to dry, I started on the background first. I originally had a waterfall sketched in the background, but I decided not to go with the waterfall mainly because I always do water in my pieces for some reason and it might distract from the actual image. So I decided to go with a simple gradient background, but the paper was really bad when it came to wet on wet painting. I had to use both of my brushes because of, well yeah, size first, and also I used one brush to hold clean water and no paint, and that's the brush that I used to blend the gradients with. Working from light to dark means you start off with less paint and more water in your brush and as you go darker you add more paint and less water. This took way too long to do because I had to wait for the water to dry in between the layers. Once the first layer was dry I would add the next layer with a little bit more paint and less water to achieve a darker gradient. Painting this way isn't very difficult, it's just really tedious because you have to go back over the same spots over and over again and you have to wait for the previous layers to dry, but you achieve a much smoother look I think and since watercolors are supposed to be used in this fashion, I think that it's good that I'm getting some practice. If I decide to do this again, which I probably will, I'll need to pay attention to the paint that I'm mixing. Sometimes I ran out of a certain mixture, which caused some inconsistencies with a few of the rocks and some of the golem shadows. The paper lifted a lot, even though it held together better than I thought it would but I'm pretty sure I overworked the areas where I tried to get the gradient background to lift up. This paper is for mixed media, so it doesn't really handle water as well as watercolor paper would. Today's topic is about facing fears. This Inktober project has many of my fears all at once that I'm facing every day. The first one is committing to 31 days of art. I think anything you do for 31 days consecutively is going to be hard. If it's a new habit or a new hobby, doing anything for that amount of days is going to be really difficult to do. Especially something as creatively and technically taxing as drawing and painting. So my fear of committing to 31 days of art is not actually being able to do it. My second fear is posting my art in public. First of all, I am not a professional artist, nor am I formally educated. So drawing has been pretty much something I did ever since I was a kid, and I'm very much self-taught. I'm an amateur at best, so whenever I do try to post something that I've made, say on Instagram, I get really intimidated by other artists and I know a few of them who are really talented and just far better than I am. So the thought of them seeing what I do really scares me. And my third and final fear is creating daily videos. It's one thing to create and finish a piece of art every day. But if you add videos to this, you turn an art challenge into Mission Impossible. I've already missed one day this month and it's 11 o'clock so I am pushing it with this last video. 
I was always afraid to commit to a regular release schedule on my YouTube channel, so having to dedicate myself to a daily Inktober video was probably my biggest fear out of all of these three. So far, these fears that I've faced are not as scary as they once was, mainly because I am starting to see the rewards from trying to face them every day. For committing to 31 days of art, it's day 9 and I feel like I've already improved some of my drawing and painting skills and I've developed a discipline that I didn't have before when creating art and making videos. If this is how it feels at day 9, I can't wait to see where I'm at at the end of this month. I've been posting my art in public on my Instagram and those same artist friends that I was so worried about have actually liked all of my pictures. This has given me that boost of confidence to keep going and also to try things that I never normally would try and especially things that are really hard for me to do. And finally, with creating daily videos, I've streamlined my art video workflow so I can edit videos much quicker and I've overcome my fear of voiceovers. When I used to make videos, the voiceover portion was the part that I dreaded the most, but now I've become more comfortable talking into a mic and not having to worry about every single word that I say. And one of the coolest rewards from making these daily videos is that I get to interact with my subscribers and viewers a bit more because I'm doing these videos every day. So I wanted to give a little shout out to two of my viewers who have been watching all of my Inktober videos and leaving a comment. They are designed by Megan and Hill Art. Thanks guys for leaving comments and joining in on the topics. So that wraps up today's topic of facing your fears. I want to know how you guys are facing your fears. What are they? And do we share any? Let me know in the comments below if you want to jump in on this discussion. And here is the finished piece. I am really happy with it. My husband Mario said that my shadows looked good, which is great because it's something that I've been working on for the past few prompts. It took way longer than any of my normal pieces, but I think it's definitely because of how I approached the painting process. And if I could do this again to try to be a little bit faster, I might use a different paper. Going from light to dark really works for me for some reason, and I will be doing that moving forward since it does help me understand where lights and shadows should be. That's it for today's video. I hope you like the new format and I would love to hear your thoughts on how this video structure went for you and if you guys have any topics you want me to discuss. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next Inktober video. Goodbye.